Good morning, good morning, good morning. You know why I'm here. Welcome to my 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 Tuesday intraday slash trade day trade analysis, where I'm just looking for potential setups that I can get into this Tuesday that could either be swing trades or just I, I try to get day trades in. Basically, <laughs> I try to find day trades, try to get it, and just try to look for my main setups that I like. So gonna start off with a DXY as per usual. Um, so just piggybacking off of what I had said on Sunday for the DXY, nothing's really changed. There hasn't been, there has been some movement with the DXY, but it hasn't broken the structure of here that I, that I needed it to break for me to be like, all right, well then this is probably just gonna continue to the upside. But as we can see here, as from this, impulsive move to the downside we do see that price did come and hit my buy box which is at the seven which was at the 71 percent fibonacci level this started to rise up uh, i'm still looking for price to continue to the upside but what i and i again i gotta be careful u.s elections and all that stuff but what i mainly wanted to show was that i want to get an entry off of a retracement off of let me get it over here. Because I had already done this markup. I want I want price to come down basically to 92.818 area or the, where you can see this buy right here. I want I want price to reach down there. And let me just make sure this is the right fib. Yeah, I want price to from this from this bullish move that I made, I want price to come down give me this entry all the way down here at the like between the 61a and the 70.6 and then continue to the upside that's what i'm trying to get at before we did get when we, when we had this bullish push up to the upside price did stop on my buy box then went back up so i want something very similar to happen so that's what i'm looking for on the dxy basically i just want price to come back down to 92.800 area and then go bullish that would be ideal for my entries on EURUSD because again, I don't think that price is gonna get back down over here. Let me scoop that. I don't think that price is gonna get back down to like 92.330 necessarily for it to keep going to the upside. So we'll love to see that. So let's go into the 15 minute time frame. then yeah right here just want to get it this buy box and then push to the upside like i guess that price didn't price wasn't able to make this move so yeah let's just take it down there it almost did it almost tried to but it only came to this 50 percent and then came in the net the just the general area before going bullish and i'm sure that if we go on to the arbitrage side that is going to show us something very similar well, not something similar, but still the possibility for this to sell definitely still exists. But the one hour doesn't look that great to me. Oops. There you go. So, yeah, that one, this one hour time frame, it's kind of looking like it does want to go bearish, which again, I want, I want price to literally come down here to the lower danger zone at 92.850, literally. And then again, go bullish. That would be very nice, like 92.850, 92.800. If price can get down there, that would be nice. Then uh, that's when I'll definitely start looking for buys. Um, and look at the four hour real quick. I know, I know what the daily looks like, but the four hour, it still hasn't caught that buy, so that's what's even making me more hesitant to try to get into. Oh well, actually, it just it is apparently going to call for the buy off of this candle right here, which now makes me like, hmm. I'm gonna wait and set up an alert for the one hour because guess what? This if it goes bullish for like probably like off of one candle then we'll probably get the move to the upside. But this, I like this candle right here. 
it showed that price wanted to try to break these highs that it made it never could so this is showing me that bears might be coming into play and even right here with the level pro both lines are under the ground zero so dxy gonna let it play man and if i miss my entry again then hey it is what it is but i don't think that this is gonna necessarily go into a buy right now yeah even the 15 minutes calling for a sell well it's about to call for the sell once this candle closes let me just scoop it up Yeah, people might have got faked out on this move this morning. Who knows? And yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and be patient because even with the 15 minute time frame, price could literally just stay right here, chill, and then go bullish. I don't think it is. I think it's going to go bearish. Everything on this chart on the, on the 15 minute is showing that price wants to go bearish. So that's what I want to see. And we'll just be patient and we'll wait it out. So let's go on over to Euro USD. I'm pretty sure it looks the exact opposite other than the, num the numbers. Well, not the exact opposite, but fairly opposite, if you will. Mm, oh, that felt good. All right, let's see, let's see. So what we have on Euro USD, again, fairly the same, the same stuff, fairly, fairly same. Not really gonna go on the daily time frame for EU. Came and hit my buy box. I want that push to the upside still. Like, let me see. I do see this fib right here, or this impulsive move to the downside. So price could literally stop right here and then continue to the downside or even come up to 1.18270. That's not bad at all, but again, I still wanna see price. Let me see, I think I probably hit some stuff. Yeah, from this bullish move up. Came to the buy box, respected it three times. Still expected to go push up a little bit. That's cool. I'm not looking to get into the buy because I'm being really picky and really careful with USD pairs right now. It's like, you know, elections coming up. Don't want to really try to do anything that isn't necessarily a smart idea, right? Don't want to try to get it to any retracements or anything. Cause overall I'm looking for a sell on this, but I just need push, I need price to push back up. I want, I want, I would love, again, I would love for price to come up to this sell box for me. I would love for it to come up here to drop down. Cause yeah, although I do see this bullish move to the upside, I don't think that the US dollar is gonna, is gonna, is gonna lose strength. I really don't think that it is with all, especially, I mean, there's this book that I read, of course, um, Mark Douglas, um, and he's, and he explains that, or he says that usually during, after, after six months of a election year, that the market tends to go bearish. So I'm looking for that. And if you guys traded any of the S and P's or anything like that, then you can that that statement might be agreeable to some or most. But anyways, let me go ahead and hide this, and just to see the play one more time. I'm looking for sales right here. At one point, I would love for one point one nine hundred to get hit that was where my, that's where my selling it's at and then a drop i don't think it is price just came to the 61.8 moved up a little bit higher but then ended up dropping so the sell is still the sell is kind of confirmed i just want my entry well not kind of the sell is confirmed for me i just want my entry back up here if price does manage to come back up here and show rejections i'm just going to take the sell right here but 1.1900 is my my look my area that i'm definitely looking for 
So go on to arbitrage. Let's see what Arby's talking about. So 15 minute looks like it wants to start looking for a buy. I like seeing that push to the upside. If price was back down here at 1.1800, I, I probably would have said, okay, let's try to get into a buy, but no need. Really no need to. Just gotta be picky right now. Um, yeah, the one hour. Oh, let me get rid of all these drawings so it doesn't look as confusing. Yeah, the one hour time frame, this could still sell definitely. If this holds right here, then it could potentially drop, but I'm not looking for that. I'm looking forward to break that RSI line. And Level Pro and Arbitrage Z are looking like they want to do the same. And last but not least, four hour time frame again i like seeing this this is what i like seeing for a four hour sell prices under our sideline is rejecting off of it has been writing it but these level pro is still showing that it wants to buy and the arbitrage z down here it doesn't look like it necessarily wants to go bearish either so again just waiting on your usd if i can get price to come back up to 1.18500 we'll see what happens but i would love for price to come up to 1.1900 that's just what i want to see so let's go ahead and go on to gbp usd all right now as from the chart that I, I sent to the chats, I keep forgetting to send it to Slack. This trade hit my stop loss, yes. Or it hit stop loss that I had given, but I still want to, I still want to, um, to sell it. I want to see price break out of this of this pendant that I have here. I want to see price break out and then we'll and then it will we will most likely get the direction where we want price to go. But as I'm seeing right here, it's more go it more it looks like it's more to the upside than to the downside. Instead of there you go. This looks like it's gonna push up then rather to the downside, which is what I want to see. This that that'd be love. It came and hit my buy box. I had I was able to get an entry down here. Still want to take this to the upside. If it doesn't, if it doesn't go to the upside, then I'll be really surprised. Well, not really. Like you can't can't be surprised in these markets because the markets are neutral. Quotations. <laughs> but yeah, so I still want to see price come up to, even if it comes up to at least one point three one hundred, that'd be cool for an entry. But I would definitely rather have price. And again, I've been talking about it. I've talked about it multiple times. So I want to talk about it again. Would love for price to come up to 1.32500 so that I can drop, I can sell it down. It literally came in a whip to 61.8 and then dropped. That wasn't, that wasn't cool. I didn't, I didn't like seeing that. But nonetheless, it happens. Got to, got to roll with the punches. Let me get rid of all of these lines down here. But yeah, guys, I want to see price push up to the upside still. I want to see this entry and then drop down. And it's it could very well just hold right here, but I don't think it is. It could and it look kind of looks like it, but yeah, I'm sticking to what my what I have and what I'm I'm looking for, especially with the DXY how it's looking, that it could still go bearish like short term. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna play that way. Arbitrage four hour. It looks just like Euro USD. It looks like it's under it's under this RSI line. Well, it's technically not. It's over the RSI line right now. But it could very well just respect this and drop. So and I would I would I would hate for there to be some momentum or some vol, vol, volume pickup right now for that to happen. But this is what I, this is what I'm playing off of right now. One hour time frame, got the buy, 
it faked out to the downside. Peyton called that yesterday, and then boom, getting the push up. So he'll be happy to see this. And then 15 minute time frame. Let's see what the 15 minute says. Fifteen minute bullish move to the upside, just holding over. So yeah, I like seeing all that for GU for the buys. So again, I'm not, I'm, I'm still in this buy from um, when I had caught it on Sunday. My stop loss did get hit, but I got back in because I'm just like, you know, I don't think that this is gonna sell. Sometimes you just gotta take that early L to get the overall W, right? no reason for you to have to be able to or no no reason that if you still see that price is gonna if you're still seeing that price is gonna buy and then your stop loss gets hit in the buy because you moved it too too close for you not to still be able to get in it because i've been in trades where i've been in drawdown 100 pips <laughs> but anyways AUD usd you guys know what i said i still want price to come back up here and apparently based, like I said, based on the DXY, it looks like we still might get that push up and then the drop down. I'm surprised that this didn't drop when the S&Ps and the, and the Dow Jones dropped yesterday. Cause usually AUD USD follows suit with the US indices as I think, as I've noticed in the past couple of months. But sometimes that doesn't always happen. Just like how people say that gold when the US dollar is dropping, you should be looking to buy gold. That's all, it doesn't happen all the time. Like it does happen. And when it does, it's nice, but that's not something that you should always depend on seeing. But yeah, I still wanna see price come up, hit this, the top of this channel and then drop back down to the bottom side of the channel. Simple as that. Um, head and shoulders, I still want this to, I still want this to get retested because if this is the, if this, was the head and shoulders right here, then I would be like, yo, really? <laughs> but yeah, I want to still see this drop. Although I do see, hold on, are you not going to draw? Oh, I didn't press it. Never mind. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, 78.6, still like that right there. Price came and hit that 61.8, rejected off of it. But I still want to, I, even, I just want price to come up to this channel. Even if it doesn't hit this, the third side, of, no, I still, want to, I still want it to hit this because that would be a sniper entry. So I'm setting my, I'm setting a, a sell limit at 0 0.71956. And I'm just gonna let price do the rest. If it doesn't hit my limit order, then I'm just gonna be like, bruh. And then I'll have my stop loss right there. And my TP right here, which matches up very nicely. So yeah, this is what I'm looking for on, this is what I'm looking for on AUD USD. Um, 0.71900, that's where I'm putting my sell limit at. And let's see how that goes. Let me go ahead and go out to arbitrage and see what arbitrage is talking about. I know that on the four hour for arbitrage, it's still calling for that sell. I mean, it's still calling for a buy because I had initially got it into a buy on this four hour, on this four hour chart, but it's just been consolidating and it's still, the buy still looks very much valid. So I'm just going to wait for it to come up here again, 0. 0 0.71. 900th, that's where I want my entry to be at, then I'll drop it down. So that looks good for me. One hour time frame, I'm pretty sure it looks sloppy. Yeah, very sloppy. Just calling buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. You don't want to be trading in these type of markets. Well, I mean, if you're playing the range, like I always talk about, then that's easy stuff. Let me grab this, playing the range. Easy stuff, could easily. Down here, oh, buy, up here, sell. Down here, buy, up here, sell. Down here, buy, up here, sell. Down here, buy, et cetera, et cetera. That's 
you can play the range. When you're seeing consolidating markets like this, you can. Just know that there could be a breakout at any time when stuff like that happens, but it's never a bad thing to trade like this. I don't think so, at least. I think it's pretty easy. And then when you get the breakout, just have just have your stop loss like above these above these wicks or under these wicks. You get the breakout, then just wait for the retest and take price with whichever way it's gonna go. Um 15 minute, I'm pretty sure also looks sloppy. Mm, yeah, not that great looking. This looks like it's gonna break through to the upside. So again, I'm just having my I'm just putting my my sell limit at 0 0.71900, and then we'll play that off. So we're going to GA. GA, what it do, baby? <laughs> All right, EGA is showing some hope for this for this buy. All right, so this buy on GA, I'm still in it. It's back at my entry. I like that. I was able to get an entry down here, but then I just took profits before I went to bed. So I'm like, yeah, I'll wait a bit until it comes. Well, on this position down here, I took profits, but over here. It's back at my entry. I'm still buying this. I still like the break and retest. And if it does break you to, down to these lows, then it is what it is. But it's been still in my buy box and respecting this whole time. So I, like I said, still in this buy. Nothing's really changed for me. I do see this bearish move. Yes, that's very nice. But like I said, nothing's really changed for me. Got the breakout, retest, push it outside. That's what I want um just had a whole bunch of consolidation yesterday so not really looking at any of that just gonna go on to arbitrage i'm pretty sure again 15 minute one hour probably looked like a mess one hour looks the best and it looks like it's gonna start setting up for a buy so yeah i'm just holding my buy still nothing's really told me that i should get out if price wasn't like giving a lot of rejections to the downside on my sell box then that'd be a different story and yes i do see this four hour sell i usually hate seeing that but for me to get into this i would need price to come up here and then drop so even if price comes up here our stop loss will be at break even so that would be cool i'm like okay well if price comes up here and rejects it then we can take this to the downside. But until that happens, I am buying. So let's see how that play, let's see how this plays out for GA. I do still like the buys that I'm in. And if you're not in the buy, then by all means, hop in. It doesn't look bad. You'd have a slightly better entry than I do. So let's go ahead and go on to Euro AUD. Ooh, that M. I don't like seeing that. So Euro AUD, same thing. I'm still in this buy. It, it's basically the same thing as GP AUD, except it's between a Euro and and GBP instead of anything else. But I'm still in this buy. I'm still expecting price to fully well not fully but still come up and at least make a double top i'm i'm still that's what i'm still expecting um would love for a price to break out through this high though that'd be lovely but again i'm just looking for buys price is still in my buy box right here it's been respecting it almost gave us a fake out yesterday but didn't so still in this still buying and price again it's just been consolidating just like GA, all the AUD pairs are just consolidating basically. This four hour arbitrage, it already did do the break retest, so that's what I'm a little weary about. 
or leery, I should say, what, however way they say it. <laughs> um, one hour, don't like seeing that this is still selling since yesterday. Um, and 15 minutes, I'm pretty sure 15 minutes is the only one that, oh, even the 15 minute is making me want to get out. Mm. All right, so nothing's really calling for a buy on EA. So if you want to be safe, then yes, I would say that I would suggest that you should get out the trade. As for me, my I'm literally waiting to see if these lows get broken or where this wick is at. And if it does, then I'll get out the trade. So that's for EA. And I'm give you guys give me a couple minutes. I'll be right back and pause the recording real quick. All right, so yeah, your AUD, be careful. That's all I gotta say. Be careful. If it breaks those walls, I'm gonna get out and be like, all right, I'll look for another re I'll look for another entry later. I'd rather get out early and take a small loss rather than stay in and take an 85 pip loss. I mean, 80, 85 pips, as long as you're risking a fairly good amount, like I'm risking 1% if I'm losing this 85 pips of my account so that's okay i could definitely live with that okay let's go on over to euro gbp and again like i mentioned yesterday this is not what i want to see for my euro aud buy but it still looks valid so you have the sell box price came up to the 78.6 dropped retraced this retracement as well was a 78.6 so that could have been an, an extra entry for the sell or 71 percent sorry not 78.6 so that could have been an extra entry added and then you could have took it to the downside but again i don't like seeing that for my ea um bias because if the euro gp is falling that means the euro is losing strength or the gp is gaining strength and that's just that's not what I want to see for EA. For GU, for sure, I want to see this drop, but for EA, not really. But um, any entry that I would have possibly liked to have gone into with EG, it's already passed. So let's look at arbitrage and see what it's saying. So arbitrage, yeah, we got the sell on there. Close this. One hour time frame. One hour time frame, we got the sell, although this would have been really, really wishy-washy. It called for the buy at one, my time, and then it called for the sell at three. So yeah, it looks like this is gonna end up dropping. And if this drops, then most likely I'm gonna get out of EA. Let me see. Oh yeah, I'm gonna look at EN, of course. I, I'm. That's what's next. <laughs> that's what is next. I look at the same pairs every day, or not every day, but all the time that I come into my analysis, I do the same pairs. So, oh, so yeah. But price is riding off of this RSI line. Not necessarily what I want to see for my EA sell. I mean, for my EA buy. I mean, if you want, you can get into a a a sell right here for for your GP. It's not my entry at all because if I was selling this then my stop loss would be up here. And then I wouldn't I do not like taking one to twos at all. Most likely if I take a one to two, I'm just gonna scalp it for like a couple of pips to get out. So if you want you can buy it here. It's not my entry and I don't like it, but that's up to you. But yeah, so that's for EG. Four hour time frame. Let's see what it's looking like. Yeah, even the four hours about to call for a sell. Yeah, now this looks better. Although I still don't care for it because my stop loss would be pretty damn high. But if this calls for a sell, then I probably just set for an alert on the four hours to tell me when to get out and then I would sell. So for EG, again, I'm, I like the sells. It just doesn't go hand in hand with my euro aud cell that i have so 
that's that. And let's go on over to Mr. Euro NZD. Mm. All right, so Euro NZD. I'm not feeling it. I don't like what it's doing. It has to make a decision, all right? Because basically, this and this is the reason why I want to buy Euro NZD. Let's just get rid of all these bibs real quick so price from right here ended up dropping right made structure that it was respecting right over here you just take you all the way around then it broke the structure which is the ch uh, change of trend price went bullish on the daily then retested this broken structure came and hit the 61.8 once twice ended up going bullish i still think that this can make a higher high on the higher time frames that's mainly the reason why i'm trying to buy euro nzd and even if i were to hide all this i just want to see what the weekly looks like real quick yeah bro even right here as a structure that it's it's the no wonder it's rejected off of there rejecting it down here off of this support yeah i'm still same thing i i still want to see buys because low high higher low can make a higher high or make it higher equal i want this week to get filled this weekly wick yuck that was ugly um four hour time frame let me get my drawings back up here Four hour time frame. My buy box was right here and it did get it did it is like in drawdown currently right now. And price is still at these at this low from from yesterday, you know, from yesterday where price came in a wick down here on the four hour. Price came back to fill that wick up. So personally speaking, and then if I'm just going off of this stop plant to this high. This is still valid. If I was, if I'm looking for this four hour sell, this is still very much valid because this is how I take your NZD. I just had a tighter stop loss because I didn't care for how it looked. But this is how the trade would look like for me. So even though I am still in drawdown, I'm still in, I would still be in this trade. I'd be down probably about, yeah, 50 pips. But I'm cooling right now. I want to see price reject right here. If it goes down any lower, then hey, it is what it is. We'll chuck up the loss, charge it to the game. But I definitely do want to see rejections right here. I want to see price reject this, like how it rejected right here. Gave a fake out, which if it gives a fake out and it, it drops a wick like right here and then pops back up, that'd be love. And there's one tool that I want to use, indicator strategy. I want to see where the volume is on this, honestly. Volume profile. Being on visible range. Yeah, volume on the four hour is still back up here. There's really no volume down here, so I don't really expect price to even come down here and try to even take any of this volume. Um, let me see overall what it's looking like. Yeah, so if price can come back up here to at least the 61.8, which is at 1.77500, and if you're still buying in this, then I would that's where I would take most of my profits or look to even possibly get out of the trade because this is where the volume's at. This is where a lot of volume's trapped up at. And like I said, I don't really think that price is gonna necessarily come. I don't think price is necessarily going to come down here and take this volume. It could. It's not saying that it won't. There's always a possibility that it could. But the amount of volume that's there, I don't think the banks are really interested in looking at that right now. They're trying to fake traders out and they're trying to make traders think that it's going to sell. Don't don't believe the hype because it could very well just respect here and continue going to the upside. 
Um, wait, what am I doing? I'll just leave that there for visual represent for visual purposes. Let's go on to the four hour time frame. Or right, let's go on to arbitrage. I'm pretty sure arbitrage is all sales on the four hour coin for sale on the one hour. It's calling for a sell. You know, I'm the 15 minutes calling for a sell. So necessarily it's not what I'll be looking for. But again, with that volume, price could literally just go down there, take up the rest of that volume that pushed it up. So I've already seen some rejections and the price drops down. By all means, I'm not trying to get in it though, because I do I I don't see a sell in it. Even the daily time frame called for the sell yesterday. That's cool, but again, the volume that I'm seeing it doesn't match up. So, just gonna go ahead and wait this out. Again, like if I'm just waiting to see what it does at these lows, because just like how before. Let me go over here. Let me go on the daily time frame real quick. Yeah, I really don't think these will make a hit. Daily time frame. I'll keep this on. Oops, didn't want me to do that. I need my annotation tool. But yeah, guys, again, what's something common that we see here? Although it did fake out to the upside, that would have been a breakout, but then you see that bearish engulfing candle, you wouldn't want to be in that trade. But again, you could play the rent, you could have played the range on this. And you could still play the range on it. Like I said, price could still come down here and then this, this range will still be valid. So like, like I said, I'm not really crazy over trying to, sell, trying to sell this right now unless it breaks through this low. If it breaks through this low, I'm at it. I'm like, my buy will definitely be, be all cleared up. But until then, I'm still trying to buy this. I think I have something on the chat. I see head and shoulders forming in one hour time frame on Ian. Is that going to make any difference in the buy? Um, I hate seeing the I hate seeing a head and shoulders on the one hour time on the support. Like it just, I don't necessarily like it. Um, and if this is the head and shoulders that you're talking about, then I definitely do see what you're talking about. See the head. I mean the the left shoulder right here head up here the right shoulder is that what you're referring to let me see all right cool yeah um it's solid it's a, it, it does look like a solid head and shoulders type pattern i'm not gonna lie but at, like i said it's how can I say it? I, I don't like necessarily seeing this head and shoulders type frame at a support. The only way that I'm I could buy or I could sell off of this support is if price breaks and then retests the broken um support where I, that zone that I had that I had drawn. That's the only way that I'd be like, okay, now now I'll get in the sell for right now. But I want price. To still at least come back up here. Like that's still what I want. Nothing's really changed for me. And if it drops down, then hey, it drops down. And I'll take the and I'll definitely glad I'll gladly take the L because I embrace L's. That's how you learn. That's when you can learn from your mistake and all that stuff. So your NZD, as far as with arbitrage and with that head and shoulders that um, you just pointed out, very much this could still drop. But with that volume, mm, it's kind of tripping me out. All right, so why did I just do that? 
and just go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin hit our soft loss at break even, so I'm not even going to look at Bitcoin. It's just really bullish. Like I said, that trade was really risky, and we were able to make money off of it yesterday. So that's cool. I am very happy about that. Because that was a really, it wasn't risky because it gave the opportunity, but still. All right, so let's take a look at gold. Gold, I had mentioned that I was still playing the sell, and it's still in play. Still very much nicely in play. My stop loss is at break even because I, I, like, with this drop down to 1897, I definitely had a nice, um, I took partials on this sell. And I still want this to play out. Like, there's nothing that's telling me that this isn't still going to play out. Stop loss is at break even, though, like I mentioned. And if price comes back up here, then I would see if price can come to, like, 1913 or something. I want uh, another retest of the broken channel for the push to the downside if price gets back down there. If price doesn't get back down there. If, I mean, if price gets back up here. If price doesn't come back up here, then I have no reason to even try to get out the sell. And but again, my risk is at break even, so I don't really have anything to fret over necessarily on gold. Um, let's go on to, to arbitrage real quick. Daily time frame again, still calling for that sell. It's still rejecting in between here. It, it's gonna make it has to break out between one of these two places, and I think it's gonna break out to the downside. Four-hour time frame. Gold came back up, rejected off of that RSI line, then dropped. I, I, then it came to the lower danger zone, and it's respecting it. So got to wait for a breakout between those two. And on the one hour, caught for the sell, currently at this RSI line. You don't really care how it looks, but. It's currently at this RSI line. I wanted to respect it and then continue dropping to the downside, especially with these bearish engulfing candles, like this one and this one. Yeah, I want to see this drop some more. Very nice. Very nice sell. I had a set of sell limit. I mean, I buy limit. So it was like, oh, okay, well, that's awesome. It, it played out. Um, might get some volatility this morning due to, of course, the S&Ps and the Dow Jones being getting open like in an hour and 30 minutes so we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out as well but overall gold i'm still bearish on it still very much very much very much bearish on it it's just again it's playing the range and again you want you can play the range that's all up to you there's nothing wrong with playing the range i think it's probably one of the easiest the most simple simplest like forex strategies or forex trading strategies out there it's in a range buy down here sell up sell up here buy down here sell up here you would have got stopped out because your stop loss probably would have been like right here then price came back down up down so again and again so by all means do what you got to do but i am selling gold i'm just, i'm like currently how many pips am I up right now? Yeah, I'm currently up 40 pips, so it's nothing too crazy. Um, Don't think I have anything for that. Oh, S&Ps and DXY. I mean, Dow Jones. Let me definitely look at that because I marked this up yesterday to show what I wanted to see, especially for the Dow Jones. I would love to get that this morning. I didn't even know it. I, I was not paying attention to any of the indi of the indices yesterday. And when I saw it last night, I'm like, I was literally talking about this last night on Sunday, at least. I'm, I'm referring to what I was talking about. And I was like, I said this was going to drop. Why did I not get in? But it happens sometimes. You know, sometimes you mark up a chart and you don't even look at that chart that you marked up. Go back and see it did exactly what you wanted. Oh, wow, EuroCAD. Well, that stopped me out. I'm looking at it on my phone. Okay, so Dow Jones. Beautiful bearish push to the downside. I love seeing that.
They're not drawing anything out of this. I could have swore I did. Hold on, let me see. It was 30. I could have sworn I had a drawing on one of these. Anyways, since I don't, it doesn't really matter. Just mark it up again. All right, so Dow Jones. There we go. I was tripping. I was like, I'm pretty sure I had a drawing on this. So we had this sell off. That was a nice sell. And here, because I'll do that for Mr. Payton. I would love for price to come up and well, technically, this is, well, not technically. I mean, to be real, this is what I would love to see, but this would make uh, this channel that it broke out of and be like, oh, well, I broke out of this channel. If it retests the channel and does it come up here, it wouldn't surprise me. So the price came back up to like at least the 50% or if you want, let's just use, let's not use, let's do body to body on this one it makes it go up even higher so what i want to say is that like i want i would rather price just come to the channel retest it then drop but also it looks juicy to get into a sell up here at the sell box which we had another sell box up here price ended up dropping from it etc cetera, etc cetera, all that good stuff but yeah dow jones i want that put that small push up this morning and then a drop to happen probably tomorrow or maybe even the same day I wasn't expecting that drop yesterday, and that was intense. Um, S&P, same thing, basically. It's in my cell box. Came down to this to the bottom of this channel. It's in my cell box. Wanted to drop. And so S&P, I'm not going to play. I'm going to look at the Dow Jones more. Or I'll, I'll look at both and see what each one is doing at, at 830 and see exactly what happens because that's why I'm going to be trading. So, well, not, I'm still trading right now, but I'm, that's why I'm going to be looking at it and seeing what it does. So, we'll see how that goes. I need to read all this extra stuff on the side. Those did play out. Delete that. That played out. But yeah, so we want to see what SP is going to do right here. Would love a 78.6 entry rather than an entry right here. So I like this way more than what the US 30, what US 30 looks like, but I feel like this is gonna buy. Yeah. Go ahead and set this up. Overall, this is what I'm looking at for the S&P. This is how many points? 105 points on the s p that's what i'm looking at overall for that and let me see what dale jones is looking like yeah i like i like s p more than the dale jones but let me go ahead and go on to arbitrage regardless so four hour gave that sell on friday i believe Daily time frame. It looks like it wants to give the sell today. This candle has to close in eight hours. Um, hour time frame. I know that this is definitely calling for a buy right now. Oh, it hasn't called it yet. Hmm. I might, I might set an alert on this. Nah. Oh, actually, I already have an alert set for this one hour time frame, and it hasn't been called at all this week, so I'm just waiting for that to still call, so that was good for a buy. The 15-minute definitely called for a buy probably like an hour or so ago. It's just ugly looking, probably. Come on now. We're in the end game. Come on. Yeah, 
Uh, an hour and a half ago. Oh, wow. Big difference. But yeah, um, Dow Jones when, looks like it's going to go bullish very shortly. If it breaks these highs, then it is going to go bullish short term to go get that, like I said, to go and retrace up to where I would like for it to go. And then I'll still look for a drop. But like I said, I like the S&P more. I like how it looks, but it just looks better for a sell for me because the Dow Jones could literally be where it's at right here and then drop. So let's see what this is looking like. All right, so daily time frame, S&P still hasn't called for the sell. It still has to break through this RSI line, which is uh, to me because it called for the buy and then it's retesting it. Uh, don't like where it's at for the retest, but it could still potentially go bullish from here. But again, with the elections, we want to be careful with that. We really want to be careful. Four hour called for the sell, but I don't like how it looks. And the one hour setting up for that buy it actually did call the buy for the last hour. So SP might want to let me go ahead and set an alert. <laughs> Arbitrage, long exit all. Once per bar close, create. All right, so we're gonna wait and see if we can get an exit entry on arbitrage. If this calls, if this calls for a sell, then that will be our entry to get into a sell to continue to the downside. But don't want to really count on it right now. That's a safer entry rather than trying to enter at that seventy-eight point six, because price can just keep going to the upside. But all right, and that's about it. Is there any other pairs anybody wants me to look at? EuroCAD hella faked this out and it looks like it's still dropping. So I'm not even gonna like look at it or anything like that. But is there any other pairs anybody wants me to look at? Nope, all right, all right. Well, sounds good, sounds good, guys. If there's nothing then I'll go ahead and let y'all go and let's make some money. Later, y'all.